I could pick up my Bible one day and I thought to myself, I wonder where the word holy first occurs. And I read through Genesis, you know, the hundred time or 130 to 40, 50, I forget which. And coming through there, I'm looking for this word holy and they didn't occur anywhere in Genesis. Nothing holy in Genesis. God's there, but doesn't say he's holy. Holy Spirit's there, but doesn't, it doesn't say holy. Because the Spirit. I couldn't find anything holy in Genesis. Not even the prophecies on Christ. And I got to Exodus chapter 3, you know what he said? He said to Moses, he said, take off your shoes off of your feet, because the ground you stand on is holy. And Moses is right there, Mount Sinai. The first thing God ever said holy on this earth was not Holy Mary, or Holy Mother of God, or the Holy Church, or Holy Ramadan, or Holy Easter Bunny, or Holy Christmas. The first thing God said was holy was a piece of dirt right there. Now, do you know how strange that is? When God drove Adam and Eve out of that garden, he said, Cursed is the ground for thy sake. And the first thing he called holy was something he cursed. Just like that. The ground you stand on is holy. Take your shoes off your feet. Then he makes that ark down there. The ark of the covenant is made down there. And he comes down off the mountain. And boy, they got that golden calf. And 3,000 people die there. Killed. It's holy ground. It's bloodstained. Got 3,000 people dead on it. And they take that ark, and that Jew wanders in that wilderness for 40 years. And he carries that ark with him over here, and carries that ark over here, and 22,000 die here, and 25,000 there, and Dathan and Abiram go down to the pit alive, and the fire comes out, and the serpents bite them with that ark. And that ark goes right up to here, the king's highway, comes across here to Gilgal and Joshua, and the Lord says to Joshua and Gilgal, take your shoes off your feet, because the ground you stand on is holy. When you say something holy, that doesn't mean anything. That's just a bunch of junk. The holy Koran, well, put it in the garbage. Because you say it's holy, I don't mean it's holy. If I said the scriptures were holy, that wouldn't mean anything. Except the scriptures said that. Romans 1, 2, the holy scriptures. Daniel 10, the scripture of truth. Just because the fellow says so, it don't mean anything. Now where that ark goes is bloodshed. And that ark settles right in Jerusalem. And old Solomon says, all the places the, the ark has traveled, it went with Joshua. <laughs> and when Joshua came in, that ark went all over there like that. And about uh, two million Canaanites, Jebusites, Hittites, Amorites, Hivites got killed. That's holy. When the Lord says that land is the holy land, he said it, not the Pope. All right, now see this thing here? He said, Psalm 2, you got Psalm 2? I want about verse 4 or 5. Uh, Yet I'll set my king upon my holy hill. What verse is that? Six. Six. See it? Who's his king? Look at the next verse. Who's that? I'll declare the decree. Who is it, folks? What? Jesus Christ. It ain't Arafat. Or Rabin or Sharon, it's Jesus Christ. What's his holy hill? It's the Dome of the Rock. Right there. That's the temple area. That's where David and Solomon built the temple. Why no Muslim has any business there? That doesn't give name Muslim. That's the Muslim quarter in Jerusalem up till the Jews got back. That was the Arminian quarter, that was the Catholic quarter, and the Jew was off over here with a wailing wall sitting right in there. Well, that isn't, oh, no Catholic has any business being in Jerusalem. What's a Catholic doing in Jerusalem? You know, crucify Jesus Christ? Jerusalem. Threw him outside the city, amen? Old Jerusalem, Jerusalem to stone is the prophets. It cannot be that a prophet perish outside of Jerusalem. What do you call that place the holy city for? The Bible calls it Sodom and Egypt. Turn to Revelation chapter 11. Nothing like a Bible to clear up a seminary education. Revelation chapter 11. Now here's Moses and Elijah coming back and preaching, and they get the heads cut off in a city, and look what that city is. Revelation chapter 11, I want a verse down there about, it must be about verse so, 8, 9, and 10. I want a verse that says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of that great city, which is called Sodom and Egypt, where our Lord was crucified. What verse is that? 
8. See it? Why would you want to make a pilgrimage to there? Aren't people strange? What do you want to go to Jerusalem for? That's the city murdered your Savior. You know what God called it? Sodom and Egypt. <laughs> Have a time with it, don't they? Now, you know what that book is called in that book and the book of Revelation? It's called The Beloved City. That means in Revelation chapter 11, there must be something awful wrong with that city. You know what's wrong with that city in Revelation 11? The Antichrist is there. The son of perdition is sitting on the dome of the rock. So it's called Sodom and Egypt. And after he gets knocked off and uh, the last battle takes place, they accompany the beloved city. Oh, and now history begins here, and history ends there. And the history then is going to center around those two places right there. Matter of fact, in Revelation 17, he says, Babylon the Great, and Babylon is sitting right there. Oh, and now let's get come down here to this country here. This is the country over here. It's called the land of Canaan. It's not Palestine. The word Palestine is a word that is put on uh, Palestine by the Roman army occupation in 70 A.D., and that thing is called Philistia in Exodus chapter 15. It's called Philistia in the Psalms. That's where your word Palestine comes from. Your word Palestine means a Philistine, a Philist, a, the Philistines, Goliath from Ham. A genealogy in Genesis chapter 10 talks about those Philistines. They come from Ham. Egypt comes from Ham. You're told in Psalm, uh, you're told over in Psalm 105 and Psalm 106. You're to where those, uh, those covenants are. You're told in Psalm 105 and 106 that Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. The land of Ham. It's Egypt. Below that line. Oh, I know this thing right here. See this thing here? That's the kingdom. You see this thing right here? That's paid for with Jewish shekels by a Judean Jew with a clear title he'd do it. You say where? First Chronicles and Second Samuel. Ever read your Old Testament? He goes up to the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite and says, I'll pay you for that thing. He says, I'll give it to you. He says, no, I'm not going to take it unless it costs me something. And tells you how much he paid for that piece of land. And the first thing that's holy in your Bible is a piece of land. Well, where the ark goes, it's holy, and it goes right there. Which means there's going to be a slaughter of well over 400,000 people right in that vicinity. Because all the place the ark goes is holy. And that's my holy hill. Did you read Psalm 2? My holy hill? You know what that hill belongs to? God. The one that made the solar systems. You're going to, you're going to you're going to turn over the Muslims, are you? You're going to lose your shirt. Turn to Jeremiah 25. Jeremiah 25. You're going to lose your shirt. You're stealing something that doesn't belong to you. Anti-Semitic. Jeremiah 25. You say, why can't they avoid it? Because the Bible says there's going to be a bridle in the mouths of the nation, so they'll have to go the way he sends them. There'll be a bridle. They'll be bridled up, saddled. They'll have to ride his direction. Or Jeremiah 25. Jeremiah 25, uh, verse uh, 15. Take the wine cup of this fury at my hand and cause all the United Nations to whom I send thee to drink it. It says all nations. And they shall drink and be moved and be mad because of the sword that I will send among them. Then I took the cup of the Lord's hand and made all the nations, all the nations, all the nations to drink. Uh, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. And all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world which are on the face of this earth, 188 of them, one sack. Verse 27, drink ye and be drunken, spew, fall and rise no more, because of the sword which I will send among you. And it shall be if they refuse to take the cup of thine hand to drink. They won't take it. Why, it isn't my cup. I'm not going to take it. I mean, God's going to bless us. Then shall say to them, Thus say the Lord, You shall certainly drink. Certainly drink. Verse 20, 32. Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth, and the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth to the other. And I don't mean Armageddon. 
That's a minor battle. Only 200 million get killed in that one. This thing is international. He said he wiped out all the nation where that Jew had been. That's 188 nations. Their, their doom is sealed. All right, there, there, there it is. And uh, that's, uh, there's, your Old Testament is just filled with that. What Christians have done, they've forgotten 500 verses in the Old Testament that are coming, going to come to pass. If the Lord tarries, they're going to come right to pass with you watching them. I hope the Lord doesn't tarry. Oh, and a little history. A little history. Here's Palestine, and Palestine has never been a, a Palestinian state in the history of the world. The people in there when Joshua came in are Jebusites, Amorites, Hivites, Perizzites, and there's no king there, no capital there, no state there. There are 33 kings in that country when Joshua comes in, and they're named. 33 kings. The name is Joshua. It has never been a state. There's no such thing as a Palestinian state that ever existed at any time under any condition. And you take when Rome was in there, Rome ran that place and ran the Jews out and the Turks came in. The Turks took it over. They didn't make any state, didn't make any capital. And the Turks had it until uh, General Allenby came into Jerusalem in 1917, November, under a British mandate. And the British didn't make it a state. And they didn't make any capital for it. That thing has never been a state with a capital except under David and Solomon. Paid for in money by a Judean Jew. Christ said, salvation is the Jews. So every news media out, outlet you have is crooked. All of them. Every one of them. The no such thing as a Palestinian. You know what happened? The Jews came in this place in 1948. You know what happened? How could you know? <laughs> when they came in there, there are Muslims, five Muslim armies attacked that Jew. Up in Syria, Transjordan, Saudi Arabia, and they came to Iraq and Iran and Egypt, attacked that Jew. And when they came in there, they told every Arab in Palestine, get out, and if we catch you in there, we come in, we're going to hang you. As a, as a, as a conspirator with the Jew. 600,000 Palestinians left when the Jews came in. 300,000 stayed. The Jews won the thing, the 300,000 stayed. None of them were hung, and they became citizens, and were even given an opportunity to vote which you couldn't do in any country of Muslims ever ran. You couldn't vote for who's going to run you. They could under the Jews. 600,000 left. You know how many came back? Three million. There are three million refugees in Palestine. They weren't born there, weren't raised there, and they constitute terrorist organizations dedicated to genocide. If you give them that thing right there, what you're doing is arming Islam to kill Jews. I got 13 statements by Islam's leaders from 13 different countries where every one of them says our goal in getting a capital is to get rid of every Jew in the land. Hitler called out Juden Ryan, free of Jews. That's the position. This guy here is a Nazi who lived in Germany. And Arafat is his nephew. So he wants his Palestinian state set up there so he can kill every Jew in the land. You don't have peace talks for those kind of people. They tried it with Hitler. If you just give me, you know, the uh, Rhineland, I'll quit. <laughs> but he didn't. Well, now, if you just give me uh, Austria, I'll quit. But he didn't. Now, if you just give me the Sudetenland and Czechoslovakia, I'll quit. But he didn't. Well, if you just give me the, Pol the Danish corridor, the corridor, the Danzig corridor to Poland, I'll quit. But he didn't. Brethren, the only thing that men learn from history is that men never learn from history. You're seeing the thing right now, and right now, Bush and Blair are sitting down to find how much more to give Muhammad in order to avoid war. That's what you did with Hitler for 10 years, and then you had the biggest war you ever saw. All, Jews, all the Jews have right now is this piece of land right here. And then into Jerusalem like that, and then out like that, and then around the Gaza Strip, and down here like this, and that's all they've got. They've got less than half the land God gave them. This is called the West Bank. That West Bank is three million Muslims. And not one of them has any business being there. You got Galatians, that thing in Galatians? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. She has no business there. Get her out. Who's going to do it? Nobody. Now see that thing right there? That's all that Jew has, and this whole thing was his in here, 
And when Churchill sat down in 1921 with the Arabs and the Catholics in Egypt at Cairo, he took out a pen and he wrote down there, all this land over here on this side of Jordan belongs to Muhammad and Islam. And the Lord said, you think you never saw the sun set the British Empire? Well, honey, you want to wash her sink. And that was the end of the British Empire. But the news media makes these gods, like FDR and JFK and Churchill smoking his cigar. He wasn't an Episcopalian, he was a Druid. I've got two of my young men that have been over there in England now for 10, 15 years to check all this stuff out. He's a Druid. That old boy, in one stroke of his pen, he lost China and Malay and Singapore and India and Rhodesia. Just that quick. The Bible says, I'll bless those that bless thee and curse those that curse thee. People, England today is a fifth-rate world power. Don't you know that? There was a time the sun never set in the British Empire. It sets now. Russia, Russia's ahead of England. Germany's ahead of England. Japan's ahead of England. We're ahead of England. Australia's ahead of England. It's a fifth-rate world power. The book, the, the world that gave you a King James Bible. What happened? They turned against that Jew. In 1921, the Jews started going back, and he published a white paper in 1929, where when the Jews got back there, they couldn't get off and land on the beach. The Bob wire concentration camps on the beach in 1929, before Hitler ever got to be a oh, head of the German people. Did you ever see the movie Exodus? That the British stopping the Jews from getting back to the homeland. And the Lord said uh, to Herr Goering, Hey, Fat, I got a job for you. And Goering said, Was is that? <laughs> and the Lord said, I want to have you go and bomb Coventry off the map, okay? Befail this, befail, an order's an order. And away she went. Now we've got to wind this thing up. These are people that led the Jews in the days after that, after 1948, when they got back. That's the military commander, Moshe Dayan, the fellow with a black patch over his eye. He gets his instructions on Blitzkrieg from German SS officers. And after World War II, some of the SS really repented. They did. And to show their repentance, they went down to Israel and built Israel an army and showed them how to handle it. They showed them how to go into the radar, showed them how to put a bomb out there on a runway where it blew up later when you're trying to clear the runway of bombs. They hooked them out. And those are those wars. These are the attempts, summits, to bring peace to Palestine by giving more and more of Israel to the Mohammedans every time they met. The Islam lied in all three of those meetings and didn't tell the truth one single time. This took more land, took more land, took more land. All right, we've about got it here, I think. Uh, here's a... Oh, by the way, you know what this land is here on the East Bank that Churchill gave away? That's uh, Reuben and Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh. That's mentioned in Numbers and Joshua. But who reads Numbers and Joshua? Some of you haven't read Numbers and Joshua? I, I bet you for 25 years. That's the land grant that Churchill gave to the Muslims. It's Jewish land for the tribes. And it's where the Ark of the Covenant went. Right up through there and right across Da, like that. All right, now here's some place you didn't know about, Golan Heights. That's the place up in here where whoever has the high ground can shoot artillery and rockets down on the Jewish people, and that, that was given way, given to Muhammad uh, by one of those meetings there. That's called the Golan Heights. This is called the Gaza Strip. The Gaza Strip is this thing right along here, which is right in the middle of the land of Palestine, but that's Arafat's uh, uh, terrorist quarters. And when his boys go out and run and make a hit, they come back and hide in there. And one time they had a terrible time, and about 18 of them had to hide, so they went to the best place to go, and that's the place where Arafat's wife went to church, the Church of the Nativity. That's why the terrorists went in there, because the Arafat and the Pope are just like that. You know what the Pope says? The Pope said it's not only illegal to give Jerusalem to the Jews, but it's immoral. Now listen, people, I know you want to get along, folks, and keep your image up and keep your income coming. I know you Yankees. I know you. You want to keep things going just right for, for you know, for, for certain reasons. But let me tell you something. 
When a pot-bellied, lying, Bible-rejecting reprobate gets up there and tells you that God is immoral and, repro- and, and is illegal and immoral, you need to kick him off the throne. I don't care if your mother's a Catholic. You ought to have better sense. Amen. <laughs> I mean, folks don't amen me. See, myself. I amen myself. If nobody amen me, I'll amen myself. I know a good preacher. Just because a man is a pope, you think he has a right to say that? After that book tells you a hundred times that land belongs to the Jew, and the Lord calls it my land, and says, I gave it to my people. Not one Catholic or one Arabian has any business in Palestine for anything in that book. Now, what you got to do, Christians, is get rid of that book to get along. You want to get along? Burn your Bible. Nothing like a Bible to clear up the college education.